So here we have the tour box and I'm going to start off by using windows. Okay. So here we have, let's say we have this and I can use the knob to cycle the folder. And now I can use this, I can use the dial and I've customized the tall and the short to be the copy and paste. So anytime I'm going to copy and paste something, so if I copy this and I paste it over here, it'll paste right there. If I need to pull up, let's say I have this folder open and I need to duplicate it or just open another, click this and it opens it up, it duplicates it. But from here, you can go on to your desired folder. I've also made this to control the volume for the computer. Because there's nothing playing. And I've also added this to open up the task manager. So whenever After Effects or anything freezes, I can just go ahead and end the task. Up will go forward, down will go back. The left will control pretty much act as a as a click button. And it will open it up on the other window if you click on it. The right one will act as the left click, as the right click. So in case, let's say you're out of, your mouse runs out of battery and you can use this temporarily just for a couple minutes while the mouse charges. This will, this little moon symbol will reflect, will refresh the screen as I refresh a lot instead of going here and refresh. And also, I've added this command. So if I click on this button, it will pull up the... Because I'm always switching from, from headphones to speakers, so... I can easily switch from headphones to speakers. The way you add this command, go to your C drive, go to Windows, System 32 and look for okay, you have to look for this right here. Either you're looking for the task manager or you're looking for for this, whichever one you're going to to use. They're both in that same file folder. So this is for the control panel. So you can see it says the control panel item and that's the location how to get to that. The way you you would need to go here and let's say you're gonna install it here. Go to open, open file, because there's a file you're opening. And then you go to that location I just told you. And that will be right there and then you open and that will be it and then you give it a name once you have it it'll it'll allow you to give it a name and just click ok and then next time you, do, you just open it like that instead of going here here and it will open it up right there or there so here we have chrome I've customized the dials as well to to be able to scroll through the window uh, through this through the page. This one will zoom. Will zoom in and zoom out. So if you're reading something, you can just zoom in real quick. And instead of going back to 100, looking for let's say you have 500, instead of going back, you just double click on this, and it will bring you back to 100. Also, if I need to check my downloads, I will just click on this. There I can check my downloads folders instead of going here, downloads, copy and paste. So if I need to copy this website, copy, I will paste it right there and also control the volume. Of, you can also check the history of the browser and refresh the page with these two little buttons here. We need to refresh your page. Okay, so the way I've customized the Photoshop, it's I'm pretty much using this 
the presets that you can download from the tour box. So if you go here, download presets, you can download it. And I've also customized a few of my own. So most of these are the preset that it comes with and I've changed a few of them depending on what I use. I'm using the brush. You can increase the brush size. You can decrease the opacity of the brush with the dial. With the dial, I can control the flow. So it's all right here is something that, you know, you switch a lot while doing something. I'm using the, the brush, I can use this to use the tall to switch between the X and the white. Go ahead and use this to pan. Just hold the side button to pan. So if you're holding, you can just go in and real quick. You can add a caution blur, deselect, and all these will work depending on what you're doing. But you can see it works pretty well. And it will also help you with the workflow as well. And it's not much I've added, it's just a little bit. If you download a preset and you name it, then you, you go to the no link. And you go look for that program to install. And you don't see it there. So what you need to do is go back to Photoshop. Filter. And open up Luminar. And once it opens up, go back to the tour box and go back to Luminar, go to the no, no link, open it, and you should see it right there now. So this has to be open while you're searching for the program to install. If not, it won't show up. And this, I haven't seen anybody done this. I don't know if people know you're able to do this, but that, that's how you add other programs to to the tour box. So once you open up Luminar, you get it and you OK. And that's how you get Luminar to work with it or any other program. And I've also customized a few. Few of the buttons. If I'm using the brush and I need to switch between these, I would either need to press the, the shortcut or come over here and click on that. You can easily just switch between blue, green, and red. You can undo and redo. And it's just a couple of buttons that uh, it just makes your editing a little intuitive and faster. Instead of each time having to come and switch, you can just do it pretty quick. You also have to memorize these, so I don't want to overwhelm myself with too many buttons to remember. So I just keep it a little short. I'm also able to use the dials to cycle through the through these presets. So you can quickly go through all of them instead of click on each. You can just cycle through them quick give you a faster idea of what you're trying to do. Also through these. You can cycle through some of the of these parameters, but sometimes it doesn't work. And since optics doesn't really let you customize the shortcuts, there's only so, so much you can customize on the tour box. Pretty much just assign like the zoom, zoom to fit. So if I'm there, I just click undo, redo, and, you know, just basic things we do all the time. Instead of, you know, take your hand and go to the keyboard, you could do just there. You just have to remember that. And that's how I use this for optics. Okay, the way I use this for Premiere Pro is, let's say I bring in my footage and I just click on this and it brings it onto the timeline. I can cycle through the timeline with this. If I need to zoom in on the timeline, sometimes to zoom in on the frame, just use the dial, this. 
And if I need to move, it's right there. And if I need to move frame by frame, I just go through the dial. So I can do whatever I need to do with my other hand. Okay. If you're, let's say, at 400, just click on it and it'll bring you back to the normal screen size. And you can plan with this. Go in. And then with this, you can bring back the tool, the move tool. So pan and move tool. Say so you want to clear this. And then go here and click short. It'll delete it. So if I need to play the, the clip. And then press up again to pause. And if I need to cut, it will bring the cut tool and cut right there. And then I can move to the right all the way to the first. And then first frame and then go to the last frame. Copy and paste with these two buttons. I don't have redo and undo because I could do that with my mouse. Take back. So not every shortcut I I will add it to it because I have other things that I can use to use as shortcuts as well. Okay, so we have After Effects and the same thing. If I press this button, it will bring the timeline. The dials will also move the frame frame by frame can zoom in and zoom out on the timeline, click to fit the screen. This will zoom in on the timeline, zoom out. Also the short will delete the layer. I try to use the same shortcuts for Premiere Pro and After Effects. It's easier to remember. I've applied it to Mocha Pro. So we'll move frame by frame. This will zoom in and out, fit the screen. Uh, with this, get the X spline. Go ahead and plan with this. Let's say we're making a spline and you don't like it. Back. And if we do, if you're on the spline and you want to get back, you just put to the move tool, press the, the tour button, bring it back to the move tool. You can render with the video one. Once you create your spline, you can track it. So if I press forward, it's gonna track forward. If I press right, and if I press up, it'll stop the, the tracking. And it just depends on how you need to use this, but just adding these few buttons will definitely help you move a lot faster in Mocha. And the way you add it to the tour box is the same way that we added the uh, Luminar. I've also added Silhouette Paint. It would be nice if they would add features to customize these shortcuts, but uh, unfortunately you can't customize any shortcut in Silhouette, so it's limited with the tour box. But any shortcut you add, it'll, it'll work with it. And it's just a lot faster to see you on the paint. You can raise the brush. Okay, well, that's how I use the tour box with my workflow, and I hope this will give you an idea on how to use it. All right, well, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe if you like this type of content.